Hello everybody, what's up, what's going on, and welcome to the 74th episode of Raptors 1. So guys, I want to talk about uh, Jakob Pertl, specifically about Jakob Pertl today, and basically ever since we acquired him, how that has helped us out, and to clear any doubts uh, for anybody else. So without any further ado, let's get it. So if you haven't done so already, if you like the content, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. And hit that subscribe button. Check out, I've got some other content for your viewing pleasure, of course. And if you want to just hit some comments, of course, keeping it respectful. Don't be shy. Hit me up. Hit up the comment section. And of course, don't forget to join the Raptors in One family. You're more than welcome. Jakob Pertl. That was the player that we acquired on the trade deadline. And there were a lot of question marks, you know, uh, specifically with Masai and Bobby and how they you know, fail to kind of make a big splash, make some big changes, especially considering that we've got uh, two potential, if not three potential players who could leave the Raptors after this season. Uh, obviously, two of them being Gary Trent and Fred, you know, uh, both of their, both of them will most probably look to opt out of their player option, you know, explore the free agency market, get that big money, and uh, of course, OG and an OB who seems to be the odd one out. Um, although I feel like I do have solutions for OG and how to, uh, perhaps utilize him. And I've already discussed some of these solutions in my previous videos. So don't forget to check them out if you're curious, that is, but, uh, it, I, it's a shame to see that, you know, we, we could possibly lose OG, um, maybe even look into trading him for some good pieces just cuz yeah i just feel like he is definitely an integral part of this roster now i do got to agree with masai in the sense that he did say that individually we've got very good skillful group of players unfortunately they couldn't figure it out at least in the beginning the first half of the season how to work with each other and uh there was a lot more individualistic kind of basketball uh but again basketball is a team sport regardless of how good you're individually you still got to figure out how to you know um incorporate each other in this sport and how to basically utilize each other's uh strong skill set and fit within that role and of course the answer is in Jakob Pertl. And ever since we acquired him, we've been two and three. Uh, we won two games out of the three games since we acquired him. Not too bad, right? Now you might be wondering, oh, well, you know, um, uh, the Raptors against the Detroit Pistons, we had a big lead and then we coughed it up and we just won by one. We like scraped by. Well, you could even, I would even argue and say, well, you know, the games that we lost, the 20 games, um, in the 20 games that we lost, the margin that we lost was on average about four to five points. So, you know, we were right there. But at the end of the day, a W is a W and an L is an L. So whether you lose by one point or you win by one, a W is a W, an L is an, an L. And if in a championship game, it so happens that you win by one point or when the Raptors had won, we won, I believe, by uh, four points. You could, yeah, you could say, oh, you know what? Golden State didn't have KD, they didn't have Clay. We were right there, blah blah blah. At the end of the day, a champion is a champion, whether he wins by four points or whether he or she wins by fifty points. It doesn't matter. So Jakob Pertl, he has definitely um, anchored our center position one hundred percent. I I feel like. I know I did say that he may have been the consolation prize to Nick Claxton because we weren't able to acquire him. But now that I'm seeing how he's playing, it seems I'm, I'm still going to stick by the fact that he was a consolation prize. But I do feel that for a consolation prize, he's definitely outperformed my expectations but if you were to ask Masai and Bobby, they would probably be like, well, this is what we envision. This is exactly how we envision. And, and I, and I would believe him. I totally would. Just because he's already aware 
of the system. He knows how Nick uh, runs plays. He knows the plays in and out. Um, he knows how at least the core players, Pascal, Freddie, OG, how they play, how they like to play. Uh, yes, there will be a little bit of a learning curve because it's been four and a half years since he came. But he's evolved as well. And that was the... Uh, Jakob Pertl 2.0 that I was talking about that we were that I was hoping we were gonna get specific area of his play that has improved apart from the his physicality uh, as well as I mean we all knew that he was uh, somewhat of a force in the paint is his game IQ I think his game IQ prior to when we traded him off to San Antonio has doubled if not tripled in value. Uh, his game IQ has improved big time and his passing, especially from the low post, the way he passes. And, you know, a, a lot of people might be saying, well, you know what? He can't stretch the floor. Uh, true. He alone can't stretch the floor because he does not. He's not a uh, stretch five. He's a traditional center. In the sense, he's going to be banging around in the paint. He's going to get those offensive boards. He's going to crash the defensive boards, you know. But what he can do, he can still stretch the floor out. And a lot of people don't realize this. But I'm going to use an example. And again, I'm not comparing Jakob Pertl to Dwight Howard. I am not. But if you were to look, if you were to have a litmus test of what, how this team could fare, I would use the Orlando Magic back when Dwight Howard was in the Orlando Magic and he was surrounded by players like Jameer Nelson, Rashard Lewis, um, Hito Turkoglu. Essentially, you know, uh, Jeff, Van Gen Jeff Van Gundy, the way he uh, orchestrated his offense and, you know, the, the, the way it, with, in defense even, I would say, but mostly the offense was pretty simple. You got Dwight in the paint, He's going to bang in the paint. He's going to, he's going to, you know, do the rim protection and just surround him by shooters. And you got shooters, you got lethal shooters like Jameer Nelson. And of course, he was a good point guard. He knew exactly how Dwight uh, plays and how to get him. Uh, and then, of course, you had Rashard Lewis. He was just a sniper from three point. He to Turkoglu missed a fourth quarter. Uh, you know, again, these players thrived off of Dwight having to take care of the paint. And that is exactly what Jakob's going to do now. And you can already see it in this little sample of three games, how uh, the perimeter defense has picked up a little bit as well. And it's going to get better. The more games Jakob plays with this team and the more this team plays with Jakob, they're going to realize this guy's for real. Like, we don't have to worry too, too much about the paint. He's got us. At the same time, he's a very good help defender. That's what I've noticed. And if you've seen the Orlando game, my goodness, <laughs> he was he was a beast amongst children. Like he had six blocks, five of them alone in the fourth quarter. My goodness, like, and you could tell, regardless of how good they were shooting in that first half, the emphasis was defense in the second half. And what made what helped us get that win? Defense, specifically Jakob holding it down in the paint, like. I mean, for Jalen Suggs, uh, a man who is so, you know, hell-bent on playing against the Raptors like as if it was the championship game, be just because we overlooked him when we drafted Scotty, and for him to come out and say, well, Jakob's a beast, man. Like, he, uh, people were scared to even drive on him. For, for him to say stuff like that, you know, that's got to say that Jakob knows what he's doing. And this is only going to get better. Mind you, I did give him five games to get acclimated with the team's um, offensive, defensive schemes. And basically, not even so much that, but just more so to figure out how certain players play. He's going to figure out, oh, you know what, Gary, he just likes to score. He, he's just Gary Buckets. And basically, all I got to do is... Whenever he asks for a pick, give him a strong pick. Yeah, I'm going to flash, maybe roll. Uh, I'm going to, but I'm not going to expect the ball from him. He's just taking that shot. So I'm going to make sure I give a nice hard pick so he gets open for that few seconds, one second or whatever, and he's going to pull the trigger. I just got to run my behind 
over to the rim, ready for that rebound just in case. Now, the real problem, and I've seen on the social media, a lot of people have been bringing this up, and it's a legit problem. Now we have a lot of centers. What are we going to do? Well, I have an answer for that too. I think we have just the right amount of centers. Uh, do I think uh, Coloco has a chance to be playing on the Raptors squad now that we've acquired Jakob Pertl? Not as much as we thought we would have. At the same time, I think this is a good pickup for Christian Coloco just because he can now, uh, if he wants to be that traditional center, he has somebody to look up to now. And Jakob, I think he's like the ultimate glue guy. He's the ultimate team player, and he is going to take Christian under his wing, and he's going to improve Christian. He is going to be uh, a force to reckon with. I give Christian... Under Jakob's tutelage, of course, uh, three seasons. I give him three seasons. Uh, at the same time, um, let's just say if Christian even comes, if he's, if he, if we want him to play as well, yes, he's doing his G League runs right now, but even if we want him to play, we could easily move Precious to the four. And I think Precious would be better off in the four as opposed to the five. Not saying that he's not doing a good job playing the five. But when it comes to those traditional bigs, it's better to just have, you know, Jakob and Christian deal with the traditional bigs with um, pressure just kind of coming in for like for the help defense. And that's about it. It's the All-Star weekend. Uh, so I'm going to definitely be covering the uh, events. I'm going to share my thoughts about how these All-Star events have gone so far. We already had the Celebrity Game, and we already had the uh, Rising Stars Game. I thought the Celebrities Game was pretty funny, but again, I'm not going to spend a whole episode just talking about the Celebrities uh, and the Rising Stars for that matter. I'm just glad that Scotty Barnes, our boy, my boy, uh, Rookie of the Year, he came out, baby. He came out, he balled. Uh, of course, he didn't win the MVP, but he had some highlight plays. And for somebody like Jamal Crawford to be making... Um, uh, parallels to a young Kawhi for Scotty Barnes. Yeah, that's uh, that's looking very well for this rookie, uh, for the not rookie no more for the sophomore. And I'm looking forward to seeing Scotty's uh, development. Like, I am so glad we did not trade him off to the Brooklyn Nets for KD. Mind you, yes, it would be it would have been nice to have KD, but hey, in life, you can't have your cake and eat it, apparently. And it seems like that's the case. What you gonna say about Phoenix? Wow. I mean, Phoenix did have to give a lot of pieces too. They gave up Mikhail Bridges and Cam Johnson and a few, and of course, some, a slew of round picks. But that Mikhail Bridges and Cam Johnson, man, those, those were some good pieces. But again, you're getting KD. So it's a win now situation though. A win now. If you don't win now, it's championship or bust, baby. If, forget about the next season. This is it. Chris Paul's window is done. You gotta, you have to capitalize on it this season. This is it. So that's all I got for today, folks. Again, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and the subscribe button if you like the content, of course. Join the Raptors in one family. Until next time, I'm out.